Hi there, my name is James Heidema. I'd like to talk to you today about buyer's remorse. So what is buyer's remorse? It's something we've all felt. I'm sure everyone who watches this video has felt this at different points in their lives. When they have bought something and after they purchase it, then maybe they're on their way home and they have this item in their hands and they're thinking, ah, maybe I shouldn't have bought it. Maybe it's too expensive. Maybe I could have used the money elsewhere. Oh, my partner is going to be upset with this because I've spent this money, whatever. Uh, and we begin to consider, well, maybe we should take it back and return it. Well, buyer's remorse happens in the sales process. You know, it's when you call someone, uh, a prospect, and they agree to have an appointment, but they don't show up. Or when you actually uh, meet with them, you have a first appointment, they agree to a second appointment, but they don't show up. Or they show up for the second appointment and they buy from you, and then shortly thereafter, they don't make the first payment for the whatever they bought or they cancel uh, whatever they bought. That's buyer's remorse. It's where they reconsider. So there is something we can do to mitigate that. There is something we can do to reduce the occurrence of that. And if you follow my advice, I'm sure you'll see an improvement. So the first thing is uh, I want to role play with you. Let's pretend that I'm the advisor and you're the customer and you've agreed to meet with me. So this is what I would say in the phone call. I want to be very clear about what's going to happen in our meeting together. First and foremost is uh, it's going to be focused on you. In the very beginning, I'll give you a brief introduction of how I behave in the marketplace. And then the majority of the meeting will be using a tool called a gap analysis, where we will look very closely at where you are today and where you'd like to be in the future. If we find there is a gap, and if you want to do something about that gap in your plan, then we'll set a second meeting. But in that first meeting, I will not make any recommendations. I will not ask you to buy, and I will not charge you anything for my time. That first meeting is all about you, gives you a very clear picture of where you are and where you'd like to go, and if there's any gaps. Does that make sense to you? Great, look forward to meeting you. Okay, so they show up for the first appointment. At the end of the first appointment, this is what I will say to them. Can you tell me, have you received value from today? They say yes. And I'll say, tell me, please, tell me what the value is. I want to get them talking, and I don't think advisors do a good job with this. They talk far too much, and they don't ask very deep probing questions. I do. So I say, okay. Did you find value? Yes, I did. Can you tell me what value you received? They may say, well, you're very prof professional. You helped me understand where I am. We've identified some things I need to think about. Uh, I found it uh, interesting. I found it uh, increased my knowledge of financial, uh, why people do different things, savings, investment, retirement, whatever. And uh, so it was very helpful. I say, great, okay. Now, let's talk about what's gonna happen in the second meeting. Okay, we've uncovered a gap in your plan. You've expressed an interest to see what solutions are out there. So what's going to happen in the next meeting? In the very beginning of that second meeting is uh, we will do a review of your gap analysis. We'll make sure that you still feel the same way you feel today. And if there's any changes, we'll address those changes. Then what I will do is I will make a recommendation of a possible solution to the gap. And you will take that into consideration and you may or may not decide to proceed. If you decide to proceed and address the gap and begin to work on the gap, uh, then we'll begin the uh, process of doing the paperwork to accomplish that. Okay. So in that second meeting, that's where we're beginning to look at how can we address your gap and solve the uh, problems that you're facing. That makes sense to you? Great. I look forward to seeing you at the next meeting. Okay, so they show up in the next meeting. Now, at the end of the meeting, they bought from us, and I say, well, congratulations. Let's talk about what you've done today, okay? What you've done today is, uh, first and foremost, if you bought insurance, life insurance, I will say to them, what you've done is uh, you've given a wonderful gift to your family. God forbid anything happens to you, but if it does, we're gonna deliver a check to them. And what that check will give them is a wonderful gift. And the gift is time to mourn and not worry about the bills. 
they don't have to worry about the bills of where the money is to pay the mortgage or rent and food and all of that stuff because you will have taken care of that. And that's how you'll be remembered as someone who took care, took care of them even when you're not there. If you've bought critical illness or accident insurance for yourself, the gift that you've given your, to yourself is time to recover. So if you were in a car accident and you broke your leg and you're on your back for a couple of months, we're going to get to deliver a check to you. And that check will allow you to only focus on recovery and have the money to pay your bills. Okay. The next thing is throughout your life, you're going to need access to money. So by doing a savings and investment plan that you've started now, you're beginning to address that. You're going to need money for three reasons. The first reason is for those emergencies that happen. The car breaks down, the fridge doesn't work, whatever. You're going to have to repair or replace those things. You'll have money to begin to address that. Next, you'll need money for opportunities. Opportunities is where you want to buy an apartment or a house. Opportunity is where you want to go on a trip or you want to buy a new car. You know, these are all opportunity expenses. And finally, you're going to need money for retirement. At some point, you're going to slow down. At some point, you're uh, going to require capital to continue on your lifestyle. Regardless of what the company that you work for does for you, regardless of what the government does for you, you will still need to set aside. It won't be enough. And when you set aside the gift you're giving yourself, are choices and dignity that you deserve at that point in your life. So I want you to be very clear of the decision you make because you may run into people who have opinions about what you're doing. And what you want to be clear about is you bought the insurance because you care about the people you love and you want to give them time to mourn if the worst thing would happen and you want to take care of them financially. The gift you've given yourself by buying critical illness and accident insurance is you've given yourself time to recover so that if you're on your back and you can't work, the bills are still getting paid. And finally, if you do savings and investment is what you're doing, you're setting aside money for those emergencies that will happen in your life, for that opportunity that should happen in your life, and for retirement when you need the exit. So you're giving yourself choices and dignity throughout your life that you deserve. Does that make sense to you? Great, congratulations again. I hope this helps when you're thinking about a buyer's remorse because it really does happen. It happens to many of us and most of us don't know how to address it. So if you can just add something at the end of the phone call to address buyer's remorse, if you can add something at the end of the first meeting and the second meeting, you'll find people do show up for meetings, do show up for the uh, second meeting, do buy from you and do keep what they've purchased. All the best. Bye for now.